All right, today's Saturday, March 7th. Do a little update here. Uh, starting over here with the radishes and the wicking bed, the smaller wicking bed. The radishes are looking really good. I mean, really, really good. These have been in here, uh, I think this is their fourth week since being transplanted into the wicking bed. Those are regular radishes over there, and then on, the, on this other side are baby radishes. You can see the radish there starting to show, and the bigger ones. I've never done this before, so I don't know if you're supposed to be able to see the, the root itself. I guess not, since it is a root, but you do see it here in the baby radishes a little bit. Uh, my my little, uh, what do you call these, germination beds. These are, uh, well, they're, the results are mixed. Uh, some things like the the yellow tomatoes, they all they all sprouted. Uh, so the ones that are missing there I've already transplanted over to the, to the raft bed. And then behind that you'll see uh, these are bell peppers. None of those came out. But behind them, these are regular sweet peppers. Those came out, and I've transplanted those. And I had no luck whatsoever with any of this stuff. These are tomatoes. This is Swiss mint, and this is... Uh, uh, Vietnamese basil. Actually, the Vietnamese basil did come out. Two of them did come out. I might go ahead and transplant those into the to one of the gravel beds in a minute. And over here, I've got broccoli. Uh, one of the two types of broccoli did come out, but it, it immediately looks like it bolted to me. Uh, I mean, it just it, it became really long and spindly. I'm not sure why. And a lot of them, you can see here uh, how it became very thin. That's above the soil line where it just became very very thin. I don't know what that's caused by. I've read that it could be a fungus yeah, but I don't know. I'm not really sure. Uh, that happened with uh, this mustard as well which you see over here and the reason it's all dug up is because I tried to take out the, the healthiest looking ones and, turn, and transplanted them over to the into one of the floating rafts. Uh, behind that, this is Chinese cabbage, none of that. I mean, well, a few came out, but they don't look good at all either. Uh, over here I have lettuce, and I've got, in the front is yellow lettuce, which is, uh, they call it yellow lettuce here anyways. Uh, almost no success there, I mean, that's one, two, three out of however many that is, fifty. And then behind that is American lettuce, which doesn't look very good either. I mean, it's just, I mean, that's been whole week now and it's just not it doesn't look very good uh, the onion and carrots uh, did okay I mean I got a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of plants came up here and I've already transplanted those over to the bigger wicking bed and then this bed here has spinach arugula lettuce and romaine and this is a complete failure and I don't know why I'm gonna change my seeds and uh, Try again. Over here to the grow beds, the watermelon has really started to shine, I guess. This is all, this grows like a, kind of like a vine. That's all one plant right here. And it just kind of lays like that. There's one of my original spinach plants that I'm still holding out hope for. Here's another watermelon plant. Here and another one here. I might have too many on this in this bed. I don't know. The new pump is working out well. Uh, there, there it is. There's the bathtub grow bed draining, and there's the flow into the tank. Uh, I pointed out before. It's very, very good flow. Much better than before. And then on to uh, over here to the tomato plants. Uh, there's a Okay, out of the five tomato plants, one of them definitely, uh, something has happened to it. Uh, the leaves have, have curled uh, backwards. It's an upwards curl, and uh, the whole plant is like that, pretty much. This happened overnight, basically. Uh, Thursday they were fine, and yesterday, Friday, uh, well, Friday is when I noticed them, and my caretaker says that they were fine on Thursday. Uh, whether that's 100% accurate or not, I don't know. 
Uh, it doesn't. It could be a nutrient deficiency, but I don't think so because if it were, then all of the plants would look like that, and they don't. This is the same plant. It's hard to tell from a distance which one is which, but I have I've looked at them closely and I figured out it's just one plant that is suffering from this. And if it's still like that by Monday, I'm going to have them take it down. Uh, according to what I found on the internet, it can't. It it could be caused by a virus called leaf curling virus, which is transmi transmitted by a leaf eating beetle, and it can't. It cannot be transmitted via the roots or rubbing against the plants and then rubbing against a healthy plant or anything like that. So hopefully, hopefully that is what it is, and it's just as one plant, and I don't have to worry about it after I toss this one out. But uh, it is disappointing. But I guess you know that's part of what you have to deal with when you when you grow your own plants. Um, and the other ones look, they look fine. Uh, here's the, there's a cucumber all the way over here. The cucumber plant is all the way on the other side of the bed, but it's, it's uh, made its way all the way over here. Anyway, that's that, uh, over here in this bed. So the zucchinis, that's, that's zucchini, that's zucchini. That's the old basil plant that's coming back to life. Uh, and then over here in the rafts. Those are watermelons that I planted last week, that one and that one. And then the rest of these, I just planted the, ch the mustard. But that, all of this is mustard, and that, and, and all of this, almost this entire bed is mustard. And then, then here, here, and all of this bed is broccoli that I transplanted from the from the grow, from the what do you call it, the little germination beds over there. I have no idea if this is going to work. I get the feeling it won't. The plants look very weak, long, and spindly. Um, but I figured, hey, why not just go ahead and plant them and see see what happens. And then over here in this bed, I took all of the things that were spread out across all the beds uh, before, and I put them all into this one bed. And you can see the cabbage has has grown a little bit. I mean, it's doesn't, doesn't look like the cabbage is supposed to look like, but uh, I'll just keep trying different things here until I figure out what works. Uh, here's the here's the other side of the of the bed with the cucumbers and the tomatoes. Uh, I pick we picked off we got four cucumbers and about a couple of pounds of cherry tomatoes this week off these plants, and there are more cucumbers all over the place in here that'll be ready next week. There's some up there. There's one, two, three, four there. That's five. There's six. Probably about a dozen will be coming off this plant next week. And then this wicking bed over here. Uh, I just planted red onion and carrots. And I transplanted some asparagus crowns that I had uh, over in the, in the dirt garden on the other side of the, of the house and uh, they look like they're doing, looks like they like it here anyways, they're, they're coming up and that's less than a week of planting. Anyway, that's just about it. pH gets uh, tested daily. It's, it pretty much stays around 6.8 and then sometimes it shoots up it either shoots up or those are bad measurements. Uh, I don't know. I don't do the testing every day myself because I'm just not here. I only have I am only able to do it on weekends. But I saw that happen once myself with uh, when I tested it, and I don't know. I don't know if it's just a bad a bad test. Maybe there was some contamination in the tube. I don't know. We're usually very careful about that. But otherwise, it stays at around 6.8 pretty consistently. And uh, I'm starting to mark down whenever we add water uh, to, to, you know, to tap to, to top off the system, and also writing down uh, whenever I add chelated iron or phosphoric acid to the system, which is what we add to get the pH back down, uh, get it more acidic. Uh, that's about it, and. Uh,